Alrighty. Um, well, uh, thank you for allowing me to um, uh, present to you today. Um, the um, we've got a team of, of folks that are working on this um, this project, and uh, this project is a um, is a, <clears throat> is a, just another step in um, better understanding what's going on with the Charlotte Harbor Flatwoods. Uh, <clears throat> some work was done in 2019. Um, contracted by CHNEP, where we uh, installed some monitoring wells in in um, in in, uh, in the area, and I'm going to talk about um, the next steps here. So the next slide um, shows our uh, what what I'm going to talk about today, um, and I'm going to outline the project objectives, the schedule, and then just go through the the tasks of uh, gathering data, installing monitor equipment. Uh, <clears throat> Field biology, um, collecting the data, downloading them uh, from the data loggers, um, modeling, um, and then uh, providing a report. And uh, then we'll take some questions. So, next slide. Um, <clears throat> the schedule is that we're going to install um, 40 monitoring stations prior to May 15th of 2020. Um, and um, we're working on a slightly compressed schedule because um, the notice proceed was a little a little later than than um, originally envisioned. But um, you will hear, um, based upon what I'm going to be presenting here, that we're doing fine, um, <clears throat> and um, uh, we will meet the schedule. Um, uh, the task one report will be in uh, late June. That's uh, basically summarizing all the data that's available. Um, and prior studies of that sort of thing. Um, we're going to be doing ecologic field work, and I'll describe that in more detail. That's going to be done this spring and then uh, late summer. Um, we're installing a number of flow monitoring stations. One of the flow monitoring stations will be a Tidal Creek station that um, Dr. Chen and, and Dr. Weisberg might be interested in. It's a continuation of a monitoring station USGS had uh, running back in uh, 2013. Um, We'll be downloading data on a quarterly basis, um, and then uh, in uh, next year, uh, we'll be doing. Um, <clears throat> we'll do it. We'll model, uh, we'll calibrate a model, and, and look at existing conditions. Uh, we'll run scenarios in late 21 to early 22, and then we'll wrap up the report by the middle of, of July 22. And at our kickoff meeting a couple of weeks ago, one of the questions was, "Will will COVID-19 affect our project schedule?" So far, it has not. It's it's made things a little bit more difficult, but it hasn't it hasn't really delayed us yet. We've been really careful about um, trying to maintain uh, social distancing with our field crews, um, and uh, so far we haven't had any problems. Next slide. Um, our objectives are to install some monitoring stations, better understand the hydrology of the project area. Um, measure flows to tide on the western boundary, um, docu document ecological response to hydrologic changes, improve calibration of the model that we've been using so far, and then evaluate alternative strategies. Um, in, the, in the background of, of, of this slide, you can see uh, uh, a, a sort of a grayed out aerial view of a portion of Babcock Web Wildlife Management Area east of I-75. And you probably can see there's a fair amount of water there. Um, that water has had has impacted um, habitat um, on that wildlife management area, and um, and their uh, FWC is is really trying to identify uh, what sort of restoration strategies might be um, available to to uh, reduce the extent of flooding um, and correct the hydro periods. And I'll talk about that as we go, we go forward in the presentation. Um, next slide. Um, so with the uh, task one, gathering existing data, <coughs> uh, we, uh, we have identified prior monitoring stations and the data associated with those stations. Um, we will be uh, identifying prior modeling efforts and securing those files. That, that task is essentially done. Um, <clears throat> we will um, obtain the data that we need for modeling. Um, the, the project that we did last summer or last spring that I mentioned in, in the Yucapens, we surveyed about 56 cross sections that's going to greatly help us 
um, with um, with our modeling work, and then we're going to be updating our land use information as part of this project. Um, we'll be um, we'll take advantage of the data that was collected last last spring. Um, We'll, um, we'll um, identify any of prior studies, look at data gaps, um, and uh, most of the, the data we already have um, based upon prior work that we've done in the area. Um, there's a little table showing some benchmarks that were established in 2019 in, in Yucatan's west of 41. And um, yeah, so we're starting with, uh, you know, um, fully, up, fully up to speed and ready to go. Um, so next slide. Um, <clears throat> we're going to be um, installing a bunch of monitoring stations. I'll be showing some maps in the subsequent slides. Um, and uh, we're going to be augmenting um, work that's been done in the past. And again, I'll talk about that in subsequent slides. Um, we've provided the monitoring plans. Um, and um, um, there's a photograph showing an, an existing monitoring station uh, that was uh, an inactive monitoring station. And in uh, 2019, um, <clears throat> a data logger was deployed at that location. It was surveyed, um, and uh, it's collecting um, it's collecting water level data now. Um, we're going to be doing flow monitoring, as I mentioned, at a number of, of, um, of stations, um, and we're going to be using uh, what I consider to be state of the art um, equipment, uh, ultrasonic velocity meters that. Give give a cross sectional view of velocity. The graph on the bottom there is is a view of of velocity. The 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 blues are are um, are, are uh, let's see. I think those are lower velocities, and the reds are are high, and greens greens to yellows are higher velocities. And so we get a full full cross sectional view. Um, basically, what we have is we have something that looks like a really small boat that is deployed and and um, and uh, it, it moves back and forth across the creek or canal or whatever, and it's pinging the bottom and, and, uh, and um, bouncing, um, bouncing a, a, this uh, uh, ultrasonic uh, pulse uh, that bounces off sediment particles and gets us velocities. Um, and so, um, so we're using good methods. Um, and um, and we're we're working very quickly to get the installations um, done here in the dry season. So uh, next slide, please. This is an overall map showing um, all the monitoring stations that we're proposing to install. Uh, the green pentagons are new groundwater monitoring wells. The uh, the 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 yellow crosses are existing staff gauges that have been manually observed since uh, 2011, um, and we are deploying data loggers to those uh, yellow cross locations so that uh, we'll get data uh, at a more, more complete uh, basis. Red squares, red crosses are places where um, data loggers have already been installed in prior um, monitoring stations. Um, and then over, uh, you'll see there's a bunch of stations in, in, um, in Babcock Web, which is on the east side of 75, and less number of stations on, uh, on Yucapans on the west side of 41. Um, that's because we already have a fair number of stations over there already. Um, so, uh, so that's kind of our plan. There's a couple of existing monitoring stations that Southwest Florida Water Management District maintains across the north end of our project area. And, um, and so we're, you know, we considered that as we were um, locating our stations. Uh, next slide, please. It's a zoomed in view of the northern portion of the project area. Um, uh, again, showing these stations. Um, and um, uh, the, uh, the green stations here, um, they have all been already installed. Um, we have, um, we have 24 stations to install. 22 of the 24 have been installed. Surveying is uh, being hap is, is is being conducted today, and then on Monday we're going to be um, installing the data loggers and start collecting data. Uh, it'll take a couple days to do that. Um, and uh, we show the the water management district boundaries here uh, on the black line. Um, so there's quite a few stations really that are in swift mud. 
Uh, Swift Mud is paying for 11 of, of the stations, but there's a lot more stations in Swift Mud than, than, than the funds that we've received. We will make sure that we follow the data protocols for Swift Mud at all of the stations that are in the Swift Mud boundaries so that, so that uh, the, uh, the data can, can um, be added to the, the, the upgraded and, and really quite user friendly um, um, database that uh, Swift Mud has. And, and, uh, I have I have previously complimented uh, Swift Mud with that, and 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 I really enjoy your your new your new graphical user interface. Um, next slide, please. Um, this is a view of kind of the central portion. Um, I seventy five um, crosses through this, um, and um, and you can see some red crosses um, sort of in the. It's, they're east of 75, there's stations STA 6, 8, 7, and, and SR 6. This is in an area that's referred to as the south walk-in area of Babcock Web Wildlife Management Area, and that area is very wet. Um, on a typical normal year, uh, there can be standing water out there for 10, 10 months, sometimes all year round, uh, which isn't um, what, um, what is, is, uh, is is considered normal. Uh, so there's too much water there. And uh, <clears throat> the areas west of, of 41, Tamiami Trail, that's the Yucapans, that area is drier than normal. And what we're wanting to identify as part of this project is just how much extra water is there in Babcock Web and how much is needed in Yucapans. Um, there's a number of other monitoring stations that we're taking advantage of. Um, just above the legend, um, there's a well CH-323, that's a USGS well. Um, also, Lee County has a number of monitoring stations. Uh, those are the uh, pink, um, pink squares there. There's, you can see along I-75, 17 GW4. <clears throat> These are all monitoring stations that, that Lee County has been, been operating for a number of years. <laughs> and, of course, we factored that in. Um, to uh, our selection of where our monitoring stations would be. We didn't want to put a station that was right on top of an existing um, monitoring station. Um, we have two stations along I-75, uh, BW-19 at Oil Well Road and BW-20 at the west side of um, um, Babcock Web that butts right up against I-75. That, that little track of land there is referred to as the Bond Farm. It's currently owned by FWC and is, is um, is under design to be a water storage area to capture some of that excess water in Babcock Web. And, and we, uh, uh, we installed a monitoring station there uh, actually this morning. Um, <clears throat> and um, BW19 at Oil Oil Road, that's gonna go in uh, probably Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday sometime next week. There's some underground utilities that we have to factor into our, our station um, installation. Um, Okay, so let's uh, go to the, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, uh, the, this is the southern portion of the study area west of, west of US 41. Um, there are four stations that we're putting in. Um, the, uh, the red crosses and then the, the blue triangles are existing monitoring stations. The southern portion of, of, um, of, of Yucapens is significantly drier than normal. And um, we have um, some monitoring wells where we have a shallow well that's about like six feet below ground. And then we have another well that's about 20 some feet below ground. What we see is um, at the south end there at station 12 um, uh, there and 13, there are, um, there, the, the water level in the shallow well um, is higher than the water level in the deeper well. The deeper well is 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 in a kind of a rock gravel shelly uh, matrix, and uh, low um, uh, Cape. Cor uh, there's a canal uh, called Gator Slough that's at the north end of Cape Coral. Water levels in that canal are about six feet below the ground elevations in Yucca Pens, and and we we believe that water is moving through that rock gravel shell layer. Um, uh, more rapidly than it is through the fine sands uh, uh, of the of the the shallowest portion of the aquifer. Um, 
So that's, uh, that's what we're planning to do. Um, all four of those stations have already been installed. And like I said, we'll be putting in data loggers um, soon. Um, and there are a number of existing stations in the area that um, some measure water levels, some measure flows. Um, Gator Slough, um, the city of Cape Coral has got a flow monitoring project going right now. And we're four, we're 58, and we're 19. Um, our, um, uh, they have updated uh, stage discharge relationships, um, um, which is um, helpful to us. So uh, let's see. That this is these are all the groundwater monitoring stations. Uh, I'm gonna the next slide will be don't go to it yet, but the next slide will be we talking about flow monitoring stations. Since we're shifting from from groundwater to flow, if anybody's got any questions upon the location of our groundwater monitoring stations, questions on how we're doing it, um, I'd be happy to to entertain those. One thing I did not mention and provide a slide on is that these are all relatively shallow wells, um, eight feet deep, generally speaking. Um, and um, what we've been finding is that, um, you know, dry season water levels are about six feet below ground. So we believe these stations are gonna be able to capture the dry uh, uh, season and, and they stick up above ground about two and a half, three feet, and we'll get the wet season as well. Um, so, uh, so that's, that's how we're doing it. We have, um, I'll show you some photographs of some of the wells in, in, in just a minute. So you can go to the next slide, please, and Paul. And uh, yeah, here's, here's some photographs of the guys out in the field. Um, what we do is we, um, we hand auger um, uh, with a, about a three inch diameter hand auger. Um, and then we advance a, a four inch diameter PVC pipe um, in the photograph on the right, you can see a sledgehammer. Um, what we do is we basically sledgehammer that thing down um, as we are gradually getting deeper. And it keeps the hole from collapsing upon itself. Um, and then what we do is um, uh, on the left-hand slide, you see the guy in the white shirt. He's got a narrower uh, PVC pipe that's two inches in diameter. And we will, once the, once the, uh, once the white four inch diameter pipe is flush with the ground, we install the two inch diameter, pour in some sand and then winch out the, uh, the four inch diameter PVC um, and then backfill with sand and then um, uh, move on. So let's see, go to the next slide here. Um, and um, on the left, you can see that now the, the, the four inch diameter pipe is, is pretty close to, to ground surface. So that's, that's projecting down into the ground at that point about seven feet. Um, and <clears throat> the um, photograph on the right um, is the installed um, well with the uh, aluminum protective cover. And then we pour a concrete pad around the base um, to secure it. So, um, oh yeah, and there's a, a, a couple feet of bentonite at the, at the very top of um, um, above the sand that we use um, to fill the annulus around the two inch diameter. So that's, that's basically how we install the monitoring wells. Next slide. Oh, and we have some video that I think uh, we're gonna be able to queue up showing um, the guys having fun installing their monitoring stations. Um, there's, there's a couple of com completed um, pads um, and uh, monitoring wells and um, and so, uh, so we're we're moving along and doing doing pretty well. Um, pretty happy with our progress. The uh, so let's go to the next slide here. Um, I see a question: Are uh, do we think the wells are deep enough? And um, we have a number of monitoring wells that we've already been been monitoring, and 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 yes, we believe the wells are deep enough. Um, and and uh, because we are in in a really serious drought right now and um, water levels are, are five to six feet below ground right now. Um, some of the monitoring wells, um, one of them we, we haven't been able to install yet because we just had water pouring into the hole from a shell layer, it's about five feet below ground. Um, and so, um, so yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're working on that. Um, okay, so this is uh, rainfall stations. We, um, 
we are putting in three new rainfall stations. Uh, we've got a yellow circle identifying exactly where those are. Um, and in the rainfall stations are, are, are situated to, uh, in, es in essence, fill in the gaps be uh, between places where we have existing rain gauges already. Swift Mud has a rain gauge up on route, State Route 74, Route Number 5. And then, um, and then there's, a, there's an RG1. Um, there's a there's a romp tr 1-2 that's a swift mud rain gauge the rg1 is a lee county there's an rg3 at the south part of babcock web that's a uh, again a lee county rain gauge and then south of babcock web close to where the legend is you'll see Popash creek there's a rain gauge there um, there's a rain gauge on a on a uh, private property, selfless aggregates. It's a separate project that we're working on. Um, and then there's other Lee County rain gauges, uh, New Charlotte S, um, uh, Burnt Store Fire Station, uh, Cape Coral has got rain gauges at Weir 11, Weir 4, Weir 19. Lee County has got Lake Fairways and the, and the Yellow Fever gauges. And so we're, we feel like we've got a good Good distribution of rain gauges, and we feel that the three that we're proposing to put in are in the right locations, and um, and uh, will be adequate for our needs. Um, so uh, that's that's our our plan there. So uh, next slide. Um, okay, flow monitoring stations. Um, the uh we're putting in uh, eight flow monitoring stations um and uh on the north end of our study area um web lake um station sr2 which is a uh a, a water level monitoring station on, on web lake that that flows north up into the south prong of the alligator creek um and we're putting in a, um, a flow monitoring station there at alligator creek on the south prong um and then we've got a number of stations that we're putting in along um, along uh, Burnt Store Road, uh, Wine Gourd Creek, Bear Creek, Hog Creek, and our and Greenwell are all intermittent streams and and um, are are dry during you know all of the all of the dry season. What we're interested in looking at is is when we do restoration projects, are we able to increase the duration of the year that there is measurable flow at these stations, and so. Uh, this this monitoring project will establish the baseline for that. Um, Zemmel Canal, there's uh, there's water level water there at all all times of the year. Uh, there's not a whole lot of flow during the dry season, but that station never goes dry. Um, Yucca Pens is a tidal um, flow monitoring station. Again, as I said earlier, USGS put in a monitor uh, monitoring station there back in 2012 2013. We're putting in it at the same location. We will um, we'll be using um, um, a uh, we'll be installing a, a continuous recording side looking uh, ultrasonic velocity meter at that location, um, and so we will be able to have um, and it's going to be available real time. We're going to have uh, we're going to have uh, uh, instantaneous readings of of incoming and and outcoming velocities. And then we're going to measure velocities um, using the, the profiling method of going across the creek on uh, 16 different times to um, develop a uh, essentially a, a rating equation between the instantaneous velocities that are measured from the side looking uh, velocity meter to um, to a uh, you know to, to what the more accurate velocity is um, based upon the profiling. Um, the other stations. We'll be measuring water levels on a continuous basis and then developing a QH relationship um, of, of flow, uh, a stage discharge relationship um, at, at, the, at the other stations. Uh, again, the techniques we're using are um, USGS approved methods. Um, and um, we're excited about um, having the, uh, the Tidal Creek Station um, active again. All righty, that's, that's it for flow monitoring. Um, as I mentioned to you before, um, portions of Babcock Webb in the South Walk-In area are, are much higher, have much higher water levels than are normal. This is a photograph here of a, 
of one of our biologists that was doing some work in 2014 um, on a project that was being done for uh, with money from South Florida Water Management District. And the gentleman here is, you can see his pants are wet um, and he's got a, his hand holding, um, establishing or identifying a high water mark um, that's about a foot above ground, a little bit more than a foot above ground. And you can see that he's standing in water. He's on a tree island and, and the tree that he's, he's doing this indication of is an oak tree. Um, oak trees um, and tree islands are not supposed to be wet. Um, it's okay to have water maybe for, you know, a couple of weeks or something, but, but not long enough to establish a high water mark on an oak tree. Um, so there's a lot of extra water in Babcock Webb. And, um, and so um, uh, our plan is to extend the, the spatial distribution of these high water marks um, and, um, and um, get a better understanding of how much of the area is too wet. And um, um, so, so that's, um, that's work that we're gonna be doing. We're, we're gonna be looking at approximately 50 locations, both in, in, in uh, Babcock Web and, and in Pens. We're gonna use a variety of uh, vegetation indicators uh, to help us with this evaluation. And, um, we will um, survey the high water marks and get ground elevation shots of the high water marks, and then we, that will help us with our calibration of our modeling. So, next slide. Um, and the um, the red uh, red dots, yeah, the red dots are 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 some of the locations that we're going to be um, looking at in um, in the northern portion of the study area, um, and again we're. We're looking at this South Walk-in area, um, and we we have existing um, survey information that will help us to um, make this uh, this go quickly and efficiently. Uh, let's see, what's the next slide? Well, this is the uh, field inventory sites for the ecology in the South uh, in the in the Yucca Pens. Um, all these red dots are places that we're going to be looking at. Um, the black lines are places where we have surveyed cross sections, and you know we'll be able to 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 again get um, get accurate um, elevations because we've we've already done a fair amount of work out there, um, and so um, yeah, so we're excited to to do this. We have not done any ecological inventory work in this area before, um, other than the really southern area, um, and there um, since that work was done. A number of ATV channel blocks were installed, and, and we're seeing that the um, improved wetland hydro periods in the southern portion of the study area. So, we need to repeat that work um, because uh, conditions are different now. Um, and um, there's we see evidence of ATV trails that allow that allow water to rush off of the site west towards tide during the wet season, and um, and so um, we are going to be looking at those areas to. Look at the vegetation, and and um, we're going to be using this information and combined with the hydrologic modeling to establish um, uh, ecosystem restoration targets. Next slide. Um, we're going to collect a bunch of data. Um, there's a photograph of um, the um, 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 one of our one of our team doing some flow measurements using the ultrasonic velocity meter in the profiling mode. Um, we'll download data on a quarterly basis, and we'll graph that data up and uh, provide, um, provide quarterly reports with, uh, with graphs similar to what we're showing here. Um, and um, and so, um, so that's the plan. Uh, when we do the uh, stage discharge measurements at the Freshwater Creeks, we'll be, we'll do it, we'll be uh, collecting 10 flow measurements. Uh, across a wide range of flow conditions to develop the rating curve. And that's worked well for us in the past, and we, and, and again, it's consistent with USGS methodology. Uh, next slide, please. Um, this is a photograph of the tidal creek. Um, it's about four feet deep in the center of that channel. Um, I know because I had to take my phone out of my pocket when I was checking the depth there, and I'd take my keys out and make sure I I, you know, I didn't, um, you know, I had a way to actually drive away from the site while I was checking out the depth there. Um, 
So um, there's enough water depth there that we're going to be able to, you know, get velocity measurements. Uh, not worried about the the the, uh, the meter going dry, although it may. You never know. Um, and um, and so we will um, uh, we'll be doing that tidal flow measuring. So that's that's it for that slide. Um, and um, when we um, when we do the modeling work, um, one of the things we're going to be doing is 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 correcting um, topography in in the South Walken area because the prior topographic modeling or um, uh, data collection efforts um, um, were hampered by the presence of high water. If you have standing water, lidar just bases bounces off the water, and you get inaccurate elevations. And in those um, those red dots you can see in that um, that picture in the upper right hand, um, the the lidar elevations are um, uh, well the actual ground elevations are um, 0 0.8, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, minus 2.7 feet below the lidar elevations. And so we're um, we're going to be fixing that. Um, and uh, we think that's generally the only area that has a problem because that's the area that has um, this uh, frequent uh, inundation. Um, we will um, we'll be uh, using an integrated surface groundwater modeling uh, tool. Uh, we'll calibrate it to all these stations, um, generate hydroperiod maps, average wet season water depths, um, average groundwater. Uh, dry season um, elevations, and and then comparing that um, spatially um, to to the biological information that we've collected, um, and um, uh, during the model calibration, we will have frequent uh, WebEx calibration status meetings, uh, and there'll be a, a memo at fifty percent and another memo at one hundred percent of calibration. Next slide. And uh, as I said before, we are um, we're going to um, we're going to uh, uh, take existing land use data and look at um, the extent of wetlands, and then compare that to both what what we see on the ground right now, which may be different from what is mapped, because the the, the water management district wetland lines aren't field verified, right? So we'll be field verifying um, in, 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 a, in a number of areas. We'll get an idea of whether or not we think these, these, uh, these uh, wetland coverages need to be adjusted at all. Um, and then the other interesting thing is uh, looking and comparing what we find in the field to what was there back in the 50s. And the, the black and white photo that you can see in the background there is, is, uh, is geo-referenced aerial photographs from 1953. Mike Kemmer uh, did the georeferencing, and uh, that was an amazing effort that Mike did. Um, the dark areas are areas that were wetlands back in the 50s, and they aren't. Some of those areas are not wetlands right now. So um, we'll, be, uh, we'll be using that to um, help us understand where we need to go in terms of our targets for future, and then also um, where, um, um, you know, what we need to do in terms of uh, um, uh, our understanding of existing conditions. Um, I I have unfortunately a another meeting that starts at one o'clock, and I need to text the two people that are going to be in that meeting and say that I'm not going to be at that meeting yet. So um, if you will um, uh, forgive me for a minute, um, I need to I need to send a text. Yeah, that's fine, Roger. We'll we'll give you a second. Understand we're we're a little late, and I think we can. We're about fifteen minutes behind our agenda schedule, um, and I think from how it looks and what I'm hearing from um, the staff is that we should be able to make up for that and still end um, before two o'clock. Um, so we have uh, actually Nicole. Um, while we're waiting, she can announce a little housekeeping item related to um, this project. Justin, um, I just wanted to let everyone know that uh, the final groundwater monitoring and flow monitoring plans as provided by WSA and Roger, we now have those. They're up on our attack website, but we'll also be sharing them 
with uh, Kim Kwiatkowski to put on the CHNEP, the, the Charlotte Harbor Flatwoods Initiative page on the CHNEP Water Atlas. Uh, in that section that we're going to be putting pretty much all of the deliverables for this project. If anyone else is interested in checking those out on the TAC website, or you can let us contact us directly and we can email them to you directly as well. So there'll be a couple different ways to get some of that information. All right, I, I sent my text. So I'm back and ready to talk. So you can go to the next slide. One of the things that um, that came up at a Shar Harbor Flatwoods Initiative meeting was, is there anything that we can do um, to help move along the implementation of um, the restoration activities? And um, and we are um, what we're going to do is um, this is a very preliminary map of some places that that where I, I think that, that water is moving off the site too quickly because of existing ATV trails, the, the, the red, red triangles. Um, there were a number of ATT, ATV channel blocks that were, 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 were identified back uh, in 2008 or so. And those are the green circles. A, a number of, of, of ATV channel blocks went in in 2013 but it wasn't all of them because of budget issues. And so um, those are the, the, the blue triangles and we're going to, um, we're gonna look and see, you know, do we need more ATV channel blocks in the south part of the project area? And then, and then do we need um, them in the west side? And we believe we do. Um, and what we will do is evaluate that as you know, our field biologists will identify and say, oh yeah, the water is definitely moving off, off here too quickly. Uh, we'll evaluate that in both wet and the dry season. And then later this summer, we'll, we'll have, have an updated list that can be kind of a, a, um, a laundry list really of, of projects that, um, that uh, could, be, uh, could be used um, for grant applications so that um, we could have some quick action implementation um, you know, very close to at the end of the project area. Um, uh, I'm getting a phone call about that conference call. All right. Um, so um, we're um, we're we're wanting to do everything we can to help. Um, the, um, the Charlotte Harbor Flatwoods Initiative and CHNEP and FWC to go to implementation as quickly as possible. And this is just one example of, you know, some of the products we're going to come up with um, during the course of the study. Um, so uh, next slide. When we um, have uh, built the model and we've calibrated it, um, we'll then say, well, what if we do this or what if we do that? And, um, and we use a variety of, of model outputs to, um, to help us um, in, uh, in evaluating the, uh, the, the response of the scenario. Um, we can do graphs. Uh, the graph on the top is uh, the blue line is an existing conditions uh, simulation of water levels, and the, and the red is a, um, a uh, the, the simulated water levels under a proposed condition. And then the map on the lower right is, is a groundwater difference map, which shows the rise in groundwater in the areas that are blue. Um, there's, a, there's an increased water, water level resulting from this scenario. Um, and, um, and, and so these are ways that we process our modeling results to make it really easy for people to see what the benefits are of, of our, um, our uh, proposed alternatives. Um, and we'll also be looking for unintended consequences. In, 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 the, uh, in the example that I'm showing here, in this particular project in Southern Lee County, we were, we were trying to get water levels to a certain target hydro, hydro period. But what happened was is that we raised water levels high enough that water kind of squirted around the back door and ended up bypassing the project and exacerbating um, high flows to um, a, um, a river that 
it didn't need those high flows during the wet season. Um, and so those are the types of things that we'll be looking at um, because, you know, we plan and we think we, we are moving in the right direction, but you always have to be careful to not make mistakes. Um, and so uh, we'll be looking for that as, as we're doing our analyses. Uh, next slide. Um, and then we're going to prepare a report. We're going to try to make the report as clear as possible to describe the work that we've done, the benefits and liabilities of future condition scenarios, what the hydro period benefits are going to be. Um, we're, we're very interested in trying to increase um, the duration of flows to, to tide um, so, that, so that we have um, a, a greater number of, of months of the year that the waters are flowing to tide and ideally we'd like to reduce peak flows to tide uh, during the peak of the wet season um, and so those are some of our targets and objectives um, and um, and we're going to provide all the files that we um, um, create uh, in the case of the work we did in 2019 you know we provided gis files uh, we provided um, boring logs we provided um, um, elevations of, of uh, top of casings for monitoring wells and that sort of thing. And a uh, similar type of effort will be, will be done here. Um, we'll be presenting um, our, our, our progress reports and draft reports and final reports to the TAC and, and the Flatwoods Initiative. We'll revise based upon comments and a comment response document will be included as an appendix in the final report. Um, and so, um, so that's basically what a project is going to be. And here's a video of the guys um, hand augering. I think. Yeah. And you can see water pouring out of the hole there. He was at about four feet deep, four or five feet deep. Um, and he was up on the ridge. It's about 70 feet above sea level at this point here. And the groundwater table was four feet above, uh, above ground. And there they are pounding the, the PVC pipe into the uh, um, the four inch diameter. Um, and um, I, I was out in the field with them and helping them with that. I had sore shoulders that weekend. 